Hey Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and today I have received a really nice box. It's a maze from Todd Cutler slash Todd's Workshop, of course. I think you already know, but for those of you who don't, Todd is not just a YouTuber, but he's also a craftsman and really skilled at that. And both on his site, Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler, he produces a whole range of historically accurate, very well made objects and weapons mostly uh, that I think you should definitely check out and today we are looking at one of his maces specifically a medieval bronze mace so i'd like to begin with the specifics of this object and then i'll tell you more about the history of early maces in the medieval period i'd like to also underline that todd did not know i was going to make this video review but the thing is that i'm a huge fan of his work so this one specifically is a little bit of an unusual piece it's more of an eastern european in origin sort of maze and it's based on a piece from bulgaria dated to the 12th century. The original was made of iron, but the fact that this one is made of bronze, it's absolutely coherent with other archaeological findings of the period. I'll tell you more about that in a minute. I am a sucker for any sort of copper alloy, whether it be brass, whether it be bronze. I just love this sort of metal. The shaft is made of ash. So in Europe, the traditional wood for both axes, hammer, handles, spear shafts, etc. is ash. However, in the medieval period, pine was also used and recommended to make shafts for weapons, presumably because it was lighter and possibly at the time pine would have been tougher than it is in our day and age. Of course, in America, it would be hickory that fills the role of ash. As we look at the shape of the shaft, we can see that it tapers ever so slightly from the handle to the top of the weapon. And this is done by hand, of course, by Todd, and he has actually got videos where it shows how he does this. The grip itself is very ergonomical and it's also very tight, so it fits tightly my hand and this is good because this way you can make sure that the weapon will not slip because basically your hand is inserted between these two protruding sections here that keep it in place and that's a similar thing to what we see uh, with for example Roman Gladi. The top part as we can see here the flanges are very interesting because this shape what it's trying to do well we need to remember that with mass weapons it's all about trying to concentrate to focus as much force as possible into a very small area. One thing we need to remember is that with a mace you are generally speaking, particularly with this kind of mace, you're generally speaking fighting someone in armor. So let's say that you've got you've also got a sword. This one here is a late 13th century sword, so excuse the anachronism, but just to give an idea, visual aid. Let's say you've got this sword, but you know that if you try and cut through a properly made male hauberk you won't make it and a characteristic of swords of course is the fact that they are not top heavy they are balanced towards the hilt so basically if you take this mace and flip it around it really feels like a sword but the problem with that is that if you hit someone in armor with that sword not only you won't cut through the rings but you won't have much of an impact much force behind it because of course you're, you're hitting him with the part which has less mass on a sword but with a mace it's the opposite so what you're trying to do with this specifically it being a 12th century example is that you're trying to hit someone wearing mail through the mail so you don't have to imagine that you're using this to break necessarily the rings of a male shirt because it's you know, riveted rings solid rings that's probably not gonna happen uh, you might still break bone underneath so the armor might be okay but the clavicle might be broken in which case you still won the fight so let's have a look at the actual metal used in this case it's bronze as I said which is one of my favorite metals by the way and you might ask but why is it isn't it iron why isn't it steel and of course it could have been it could have well been but the reason why it doesn't matter is because once you're working with a weapon that it's a blunt object bronze will work just as much as iron will work which will work just as much as steel will work it won't really matter in this case because you're not trying to pierce with a sword it's a different thing because swords become elongated with relatively small tips and so you want the strongest metal possible hence uh, medium to high carbon steel swords uh, heat treated are a good idea but with something that is using a shape like this one well the shape is very strong this is not going to break and it's not going to fly anywhere because for example what Todd does is that he inserts a wedge uh, a wooden wedge so he opens a cut 
at the very top of the mace and he forcefully hammers in a wedge and what this does is that it puts pressure uh, because there is now extra material in here and this keeps the fit extremely tight this is not going anywhere no matter what i smash it against so this explains why sometimes even with armor the difference between relatively softer metals and harder metals sometimes doesn't matter a full suit of medium carbon heat treated steel is the best thing you can get and it's going to perform a lot better than any iron suit of armor bronze suit of armor etc but for example when you look at the helmet of king henry v well that was wrought iron but the only reason why they didn't use good quality heat treated steel is because it was a jousting helm so they could make it extremely thick and once a certain thickness is reached then it won't matter what you're using it doesn't matter if it's iron it I probably wouldn't have mattered if it was bronze because nothing is going through that and of course something like that wouldn't be plausible possible for a field harness because I mean it would be so heavy that you couldn't really perform as a soldier but for the joust of peace for something that you're just gonna wear hit someone a couple of times and remove then it doesn't matter and you can focus entirely on protection and it's a similar reason why a mace head whether it be bronze whether it be iron whether it be steel it's still gonna function the same way because of the shape because of the thickness of the flanges and what it's supposed to do so another thing that we can learn today is that there is this idea that since there is a progression through the ages based on metals so you've got the the stone age well, not a metal but you know what i mean after the stone age you've got the copper age the first metal age you've got bronze age iron age then oftentimes we think well the moment the bronze age happened copper stopped being used particularly for weapons and armor and the same way uh, once the iron age happened bronze stopped being used but that's absolutely not true the advent of iron and subsequently steels which is obviously an iron based uh, alloy it doesn't it didn't cancel out completely bronze uh, given uh, the majority of weapons and armor will be ferric so they will be iron they will be steel progressively with time but bronze will still be used for example for statues that's an example but for some weapons as we can see was still used and uh, even in relatively modern times uh, you can still find cannons that are made of iron and cannons that are made of bronze cannons that were supposed to be placed on warships sometimes they were made of bronze uh, one of the characteristics of bronze for example and this speaks to us again about the mace is that it can be easily cast into shape you don't need to forge it uh, you can cast it which means you can basically using either clay or whatever you're using to make the shape you want which means that complex shapes like those that sometimes you have to make for maces uh, are a lot easier to achieve with copper alloy than they are with actual iron and steel which would require more labor and more skill if you are going to make tools and you are doing this nearby explosives oftentimes it would be a good idea to make these tools out of bronze and the reason is that bronze does not generate sparks differently from iron steel and even titanium for that matter so in other words it can be safer to use bronze made tools when sparks can be dangerous another great thing about this mace it's the cost i mean this is very affordable so if you're on a, on a budget but you would really want to buy a historically accurate object well then this mace or the other sort of maces that uh, todd has are a great way to do that and of course if you want to buy one of his crossbows then yes yeah, that's going to cost you a pretty penny but the maces are extremely affordable and it's definitely a million times better than anything that you can buy on that is made of off the shelf on like LARPs, online stores and places like that because that stuff very seldomly reflects history and how these objects were and therefore when you hold one of these maces it really gives you a feeling of what it meant to hold a mace in the 12th century all right number once well i hope that you enjoyed this brief review i really like this mace i think todd has got some beautiful stuff you need to look at his swords you need to look at his, at his shields you need to look at his crossbows and, and knives this guy is top notch so check him out link in the description below and let me know if you like this video thank you very much for watching and remember the metatron has spread his wings goodbye